Um, what we're going to do today is uh, review for exam three, chapter 13 on equilibrium. And we'll use my typical format. I have a document with highlighted ones that I want to be sure and catch. Yes, let's see. Okay. The only one we're missing is Brittany. What's happened to Brittany? Um, I don't think she will be on Zoom today. She messaged me about a family emergency. So she'll probably miss the lab too. More than likely. Okay, let's get rolling here. Um, Dr. Bly? Yeah. Quick question just before um, we get into the review. So the lab for today is informal, right? We don't have to put it in our notebooks or anything. That's what I understood from last week. Is that right? Correct. Okay, I just wanted to double check again because, um, you know, I just want to make sure. Okay, thank you. <laughs> as long as you know what you're going to be doing, you know, you've actually read the method before we go in the lab. That mm -hmm. would be nice. <clears throat> okay, number one. Uh, which of the following statements about equilibrium is false? That means we've got to look at each one of them. Because there may be, well, it doesn't say more than one. So when we find one false one, that's it. If the system is heated, the right side is favored. Let's see here. If the system is heated, so let's say we have A plus B is C plus D. We're not told if this is endothermic or exothermic. Okay. So what we have to do is use some other form of, of reasoning. What happens when you do heat a system like this? Let's turn to the collision model. Okay. So what happens when you heat the system? You get more collisions. Okay. You get more collisions. You get... Um, uh, more uh, energy in the collisions. So you're more likely to exceed the activation energy. So we're sort of looking at this from a kinetic standpoint. So if you get more of these collisions that are that exceed the activation energy, you're more likely to move the reaction to the right. See, that's... That's the best we can do since we're not told if it's endothermic or exothermic. Actually, this is not even a, uh, an equilibrium question. Uh, it's not fully equilibrium because we don't have that bit of information that we need. So we have to say that that's, with what we know, that's true. What a heterogeneous equilibrium. Oh, duh, how to read the problem. Huh? Gave us the reaction right there, didn't it? And you guys are going to keep silent, huh? You see how far I would go before I realized I'm missing my reaction. Okay, this is a heterogeneous equilibrium. Is that true? I know you did, yes. Okay. It's gas and solid, right? So that's heterogeneous. So this one's true, this one's true. And C, if the pressure on the system is increased by changing the volume, we increase the pressure, which side is gonna be favored? If you increase the pressure, the system is gonna to respond to try to reduce the pressure. And the way gases reduce pressure is you reduce the number of moles the number of moles of gas total, then you reduce the pressure. That's a response, uh, a Le Chatelier response to a disturbance in the equilibrium. So that means it would move, it would move at all, right? One, two, one, two, okay? We got the same number of gas molecules on both sides. It would have no effect. Okay. So, 
No side would be favored. That means this one's false. Okay, we found our false one. While we're here, how about adding more hydrogen increases the equilibrium constant? Yeah, furrow browse is what I expect. <clears throat> you don't change the equilibrium constant when you change the concentrations. You only change the equilibrium constant when you change the temperature. Um, so that was false too, isn't it? Adding more hydrogen increases the equilibrium constant. It will shift the equilibrium, yeah. And it will change the equilibrium position. All right, so we got two false ones. Let's see if the pressure, did I write this one correctly? One, one, one. Yeah, we have two false ones. I never noticed that before. Um, that was false, and that was false. Right? Oh, no. Oh, you get, you're supposed to take issue with me. Why is this one still true? Um, no, this one's still true. Correct? Because it's heterogeneous. The only gases in here are this one and this one. Right. So the left side would be favored. Uh, you've got two moles of gas on this side, one mole on that side. Took me a while to catch up. So D is the false. One. And uh, removing HI as it forms forces the equilibrium to the right. Yes, that's true. <clears throat> you remove a product, it's going to shift the equilibrium. You try to replace that product. Okay, so D is the false one. All right. Let's see. Well, we can get number two out of this one. I don't have to, I have to scroll it to get the next one. Which of the following is true for a system whose equilibrium constant is relatively small? So that means that K is much, much less than one. Right. We're not going to, we're going to work in that territory that's very close to one because of the way the equilibrium constant is calculated. It could be one would be a balanced product and reactants, but not necessarily. But we're saying that K is much, much less than one. Okay, so we're safe in that region. Uh, a, what about A? It will take a short time to reach equilibrium. <laughs> What does equilibrium say about kinetics? Let's see for the viewing audience, nothing. Right. That's false. You can't tell how fast a reaction will reach equilibrium based upon its K. Take a long time, uh, it's false again. Okay, how about C? The equilibrium lies to the left. Uh, if you have re reactants, if K equals products over reactants. And a small K means that when it reaches equilibrium, there won't be a whole lot of products. They mostly reactants. So yeah, it lies to the left. That's true. Equilibrium, well, it can't be both. Thanks, so that's false. And two of these, no, just one. Okay. Questions, comments? I think I got that one right. I didn't think about the jellyfish pill this morning. And that's supposed to be a brain enhancer. 
and Joe Good Protein Employer. Haven't heard about that one. <laughs> Let's see. Yep, we can get three in there. All right. At least that's what they claim. Okay, for this reaction, K was 1.6 at 1260 K. I'm not going to write the reaction up there since it's already on the board. K equals 1.6 at 1260K. That's pretty hot. If 0 0.15 mole of CO2, maybe I better write this one. Plus 18 mole plus water. All right, and we're also given the delta H of plus 42 kilojoules. Okay, so we're also told one uh, 0 0.5 mole each. Okay, so each one, 0 0.15 mole in a one liter. So that means it's molar. 0 0.15 molar for each one. That's our starting position. Uh, so as the system comes to equilibrium, what's going to happen? Well, we have choices here that re reference temperature and concentrations. So if we're going to include temperature in the argument, we probably need to say, all right, where, where does the delta H go? If it's a positive delta H, endothermic, right? That means that term goes on this side. So we would say something like this, 42 kilojoules would go in like that. Okay, now how do we tell which way it's gonna shift? Do we have a method that will do that? Uh, the short answer is yes. <laughs> it's called the cube. Right, the um, not the equilibrium constant, the uh, quotient, reaction quotient. You write it exactly the same way as the equilibrium constant, only you use initial values instead, and then you compare that to the constant, and that'll tell you which way the, the thing's going to move. So our Q we would calculate as. They're all one, 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 so we don't have any powers. So this is uh, 0 0.15 and 0 0.15 over 0. <laughs> this is going to be a difficult calculation, I can tell. Right? What is that equal to? One. Okay, which way is it going to move? If this is one, it's not big enough. It doesn't have enough product. It needs more product to bring it up to 1.6. So it's going to move to the right, correct? Okay. When it moves to the right, what's going to happen to the temperature? Right? If this, if this um, device or the container is thermally insulated, that means all the heat that's in the system is inside that container and that's all you've got to work with. So if it consumes some of the heat, what will happen to the temperature? It'll go down, right? So we can say that temperature would, put my pointer again, the temperature would decrease, yes. Decrease, yes. Remain constant, no. Increase, no, increase, no. So it's between A and B. We've got that settled already. Temperature would decrease and the mass of CO2 would either increase or decrease. It would, uh, CO2, excuse me, it would decrease because we're moving to the right. Okay, is that clear as mud? All right.
Let's see. Yeah, we can get four. Let me scroll a little bit and we'll get both of them. Yeah, because we're basing. Um, oh, four through six. Okay, we'll have to scroll again to get six, but um, these three are based upon that equation. Four based upon two A gas plus, uh, no, not plus. Yields to B gas plus C gas. Okay, so four asks the question addition of chemical B to an equilibrium mixture of the above will what? Well, let's see. If we have B, which way is it going? Right, it's going this way. That means we're going to decrease C and increase A. And so uh, increase A, that's true. Yeah, A is true. Cost C to increase, nope. Have no effect, nope. Can't be determined on the above. Okay, so we found our answer. A increases. Okay, using that same equation at a higher temperature. Oh, we're given more information on it. At a particular temperature, K equals 1.6 times 10 to the fourth. Are we, we're not told whether it's endothermic or exothermic, are we? Oh, okay, at a higher temperature. So we increase the temperature, and now K equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. All right. So when we added heat, what did it do? Well, at this temperature, products are favored. And at an increased temperature, reactants are favored. So you increase the temperature, you're driving the reaction back. That means it's exothermic, isn't it? Let me say that again. At this temperature, you've got most of the product. At this temperature, you've got mostly reactant. So in order to get reactant by increasing the temperature, you have to drive the, react, the reaction back that direction. That means it's exothermic because you've added heat by increasing the temperature and it reduced the amount of product and increased the amount of reactant. So that means that this says it's exothermic. And what can we say from that? Uh, placing the equilibrium mixture in an ice bath. If you put it in the ice bath, what's gonna happen? Well, now that we know that if you decrease the temperature, you're gonna drive it back to the right. Okay, so that will cause A to increase, no. B to increase, yes. That took a little work. It's clues scattered hither and yon. And then let's see, let's go to a six, get that one on. Based upon the same reaction, it's a good thing I wrote it. Raising the pressure by lowering the volume. Okay, so we're going to increase the pressure by decreasing the volume. Uh, will that have any effect? Let's see, we've got a gas here. We got a gas there and a gas there. So three on this side, two on that side. So if we increase the pressure, which way is it going? Toward the fewer moles. Increase the pressure, it's going to drive it back to the left. It'll cause A to increase. Yes. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, oops. 
I think I skipped some vital information there. Yes. Okay, number eight. The question below refers to the following system. So if we have this uh, complex ion, and we haven't really talked about complex ions yet, but it's sufficient to say that they're, they're soluble. And then, oops, we're going to add four chlorines, chlorides. Okay, and then we're going to have here, we're going to have uh, Cl4 2 minus plus six waters. Okay, so we can we can um, follow the reaction by color. Right? If it's mostly this one, the solution will be pink. And if most of this one, the solution will be blue. Okay. So when cobalt two chloride, cobalt two chloride is added, okay. Oh, that's how we got to this point. This was hydrated and released these chlorines. So this is this is the starting point where you've added that to the to water. The hydrated form then reacts with chloride to set up an equilibrium shown here. Okay, so once we get this established, now we get another reaction. And all we had to do was add cobalt chloride to water, and it would do this. And then it was set up an equilibrium uh, between um, this uh, complex ion and this complex ion with chlorine and water as part of the reactants and products. Okay, now we have our equilibrium stat, uh, established. Which one describes uh, the system if we add hydrochloric acid, right? So we add hydrochloric acid. All right, so what does that supply? Chloride. Right. Hydrogen ions are not in there anywhere. Right? It's just the chlorides. So if we add chloride, we should increase this amount right here. And it would shift that way. And if it's not already blue, it'll get blue. Okay, it should become more blue. Well, yeah, it should. So A is true, becomes more blue. Not, it can't be both, more blue or more pink. The equilibrium will shift to the right. Uh, C, that one's also true. So two of those are true. That's E. Okay, all right. We haven't done any ice tables yet. I hope there's one coming up soon. My finger's getting itchy. Okay, let's see. I don't think I need to even draw this one. It looks like it's pretty simple. If we have this reaction where two hydrogens plus two X's, that's both diatomic, yields two X to two H two X plus energy. Okay. What if we add X two to this system at equilibrium? It's going to shift to the right, right? Cause H two to decrease. Yep. Now, why don't we say that it would also cause X two to decrease? because it won't, it'll cause some of it to be consumed. But at equilibrium, you'll have more X2 than you did when you started because it won't use up all of it. It'll just use up enough to make the equilibrium, uh, to reestablish equilibrium. So anything that's there, it's already there, it will definitely decrease or increase depending on which side it's on. So A is the answer to mine.
Let's see. Which of the following statements is true? When two opposing processes are proceeding at identical rates, the system is at equilibrium. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's true. None of the above is true. Okay, we found your answer. Right. You can assume the rest of them are false. Um, catalysts are effective means of changing the position of an equilibrium. No. Catalysts have to do with kinetics, not equilibrium. The equilibrium position, uh, the equilibrium constant won't change. The equilibrium itself will not change. It'll just get there faster. Concentration of the products equals that of the reactants is it's constant at equilibrium. Not necessarily. An endothermic reaction shifts toward reactants when heat is added. Nope. Because endothermic puts the heat term on the left-hand side, you add heat, you're going to drive it to the right. Okay, so that's the only right answer. Just checking to be sure. Well, Okay, consider this reaction. A plus B, you'll C plus D. All right, they're all gases. Adding gas A, the value of K would do what? Yeah. This is kind of a trick question. Adding or subtracting reactants or products has no effect on the K. K is a constant. The only thing that changes K is the temperature does not change as long as the temperature is constant. So that's the key. I think we can move on. Like we're beating a dead horse. Let's see, 17. This one might be interesting. Ammonia is prepared industrially by this reaction. Okay. okay. So we have a delta H, which is exothermic, and a K, which is huge at 25 degrees. When the temperature of the reaction is increased to 500, which of the following is true? Okay, um, I'm gonna write this one up here because I suspect there are gonna be some more based upon this reaction. And I'll just leave it up here. In case we need it again. Okay, exothermic minus 92.2. So that's plus, that's, yeah, plus 92.2 kilojoules. Oops, kilograms, kilojoules. There we go. Okay, at 25. K equals four times 10 to the eighth. At 25 degrees, ammonia is favored. Okay, for equilibrium purposes. What was Haber's problem? That equilibrium would take forever, <laughs> right? And that and I'm just telling you, it would. It would take forever to reach equilibrium at that temperature. So um, obviously, uh, Haber couldn't conduct this reaction at that temperature. He had to increase the temperature to get more uh, energy and exceed the activation energy. The problem is what? When the temperature of the reaction is increased to 500, which one of the following will occur? Well, when you increase the temperature to 500 degrees C, you're going to shift the reaction back that way. So the K is going to get smaller. The K for reaction will not be larger. A is false. And it's going to force the reaction back to the left and decrease the K. Uh, B. More uh, ammonia is present at 500 that no, less is present. 
product formation at equilibrium is not favored as the temperature is raised. That is true. Temperature is false. C, the true. Product formation is not favored when you increase the temperature. And the K becomes very small. All right. Well, D is false too. Probably figured that one out already. Because that says it's endothermic. Oh, what am I doing? We might need that, correct? All right, 17, 20. Okay. Well, all right. I may need the board space, so I'll just write it again if we need it. The following reaction is allowed to reach equilibrium in a glass bulb at a given temperature. So we have this uh, solid, which is a, it's a bright red color, mercury two oxide. And it's at equilibrium with liquid mercury metal plus oxygen. They knew about this reaction in medieval times. It was very popular. Lavoisier used it a lot and several others did. When they needed oxygen gas, they didn't know it was oxygen then. They just knew that it, it would support life. So they put little animals in there with it too. Yeah. And uh, other reactions that produce carbon dioxide, the animals would keel over, right? Sounds kind of gruesome, doesn't it? So the delta H is a positive 43.4. Positive, that means it's on this side. 43.4 kilojoules. The mass of the HGO in the bulb could be increased. Increase this by what? Removing some that? No, that would decrease it. You remove a product. So it can't be A. Reducing the volume of the bulb. Well, let's see. If you reduce the volume, you're increasing the pressure. And this is the only gas. So it would have to move back this way, decrease the number of moles. Yeah, B is true. Yeah, reduce the volume, you drive it back this way. Adding more mercury, adding more mercury. Would that do it? No, that's, that's a good answer, <laughs> right? Because this is not part of the equilibrium expression. Pure liquids and solids, the only component in the equilibrium expression is the concentration of oxygen, because that's a solid and that's a liquid. Right? You didn't change the concentration of mercury at all by adding any. Uh, increasing the temperature, that drive it the other way, right? because it's endothermic. Removing some oxygen, no, that's still driving to the right. Okay, so B is the only true answer there. Okay, 21. There it goes. 21. At 500 K, one mole of gaseous OMCL, that is a real compound, is placed in a one liter container. At equilibrium, it's 5.3% dissociated according to this equation. What's the equilibrium constant? Okay. So let's put what we know. Temperature equals 500 degree, 500 K. Does that matter? Now, because we're not changing the temperature. Um, we have one mole of ONCl, and this is the equation for that reaction. It 
These are all gases, by the way. Um, okay, so let's use an ice table. I think that would work here. We got to have these three terms before we can calculate that value. All right, so what are we starting with? We're starting with one mole per liter. One molar and zero here, zero there. So we know the reaction is going to the right. Um, but we're also told that at equilibrium, 5.3%, this is 5.3% dissociated. And so 5.3% of that one molar is over there. So what's 5.3% in molar terms? Well, since we only have one mole, 5.3% is 0 0.053, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to add uh, the same amount here, 0 0.053 here, but only half of it over here. So 0 0.02. One five. No, that's not right. Thirteen six five. There we go. And we've lost zero point oh five three. Okay, so now we can calculate if I did that right. Um, Point oh five three. So I get zero point nine four seven molar, and this is zero point oh five three, and this is zero point oh two six five. Okay, so let's see if that works. So calculate the K. Uh, we have the NO zero point oh five three squared. Uh, and then we have 0 0.0265 to the first power. And then we have 0 0.947 left squared. Okay. I need three hands. Okay, 0 0.053 squared. Okay times 0 0.0265, and then we'll take 0 0.947, square that, and divide it into that. So I get 8.3 times 10 to the minus five. Yippee, it's up there. <laughs> Did I lose anybody in that reasoning? Right. The key is that 5.3%. What does that mean? 5.3% of one is 0 0.053. Right. Because times 100, it'd be 5.3. And then you have to say, the balanced equation tells you, well, how much would that add over here? Well, it add the same amount here. But there's only one per two here, so it's only half. So that's how you construct your table. Let's see. Uh, Twenty two. Fifty two. For the reaction below, Kp, Kp equals 1.16 at 800 degrees C. All right. And that reaction is, looks like the decomposition of solid calcium carbonate, which is, this reaction is carried out every day to the order of millions of tons. This is how they make concrete. They heat that up and it evolves carbon dioxide and leaves behind 
calcium oxide and just mix it with the right amount of sand and aggregate and water. Yeah, concrete. Okay. Um, if a 31.3 gram sample of calcium carbonate, 31.3 gram sample, is put in a 10 liter container, 10 liter container, and heated to 800, what percent of the calcium carbonate will react to reach equilibrium? All right, so what's the equilibrium expression here? Well, Kp equals that's a solid, that's a solid. This is the only term, CO2 to the first power. And that's equal to 1.16, right? So what does that mean? That means that since this is, uh, I wrote that correct, incorrectly. This is the partial pressure of CO2. which means this is 1.16 atmospheres, all right? Okay, so if we've got 31.3 grams here, how many moles is that, right? Because we can't find out how much this there is unless we know how many moles we start with. Okay. So um, let's convert this to moles. Calcium carbonate is, let's see, calcium is uh, 4008, 40.08 for calcium. And carbon is 12.01. And three oxygens is 48. So that's 100.09. grams, 100.09 grams. And now give us the number of moles. We divide that into 31.3, 0. 0.3127, calcium carbonate. All right. All right, we know that's how much we're starting with. What we want is 1.16 atmospheres of pressure in a 10 liter container. And at this temperature, so guess what we have to do? Use the ideal gas equation to find out how many moles of carbon dioxide would give you that pressure. All right, so PV equals NRT, remember that one? Vaguely, okay. Uh, solve it for N. N equals PV over RT, okay? So what's the pressure? Well, the pressure is 1.16 atmospheres. The volume, 10 liters. R is the one that with at liter atmospheres in, 08206. And temperature is uh, 800 C plus 273. Right. So that's 1,073. Okay. All right. So let's look out the trusty calculator and figure out what how many moles of carbon dioxide we're producing. Um, 1.16 times 10, 0. 0.08206 divided into that in 1073. Into that. So that is 0 0.1317 moles of oxygen. Okay. So how many moles of calcium carbonate is that? How many moles of calcium carbonate did we have to decompose to get to that place? It's one to one. Exactly the same. 0 0.1317 moles 
of calcium carbonate were consumed. Right? Uh, now, they don't say what percent of calcium carbonate by mole or by mass. I have to assume that they mean by mass. So what mass is this? Actually, we didn't even need to calculate that, did we? If we're going to do it by mass, we just need to know how much mass this one is. 0 0.1317. Convert that to mass. This is moles. So 100.09 times that value. is 13.2, 13.2 grams consumed. And the question is, what percent will react? Okay, so that's how much consumed, that's how much reacted. So 13.2, I think I got room over here, 13.2 grams divided by 31.3 grams times 100. That equals what? Ah. There we go. I get 42.1%. So since that's the answer given up there, the assumption was correct. This is mass, mass. Probably be a different value if we used. Yeah, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, it'd be closer to 30% by mold, mold percent. But mass percent is what they were after. Okay. So I started down the wrong hole with this one, didn't I? We didn't need that. It happens. <clears throat> it's like my cat sitting in the, the the deck door looking out the window at the birds eating the bird seed. Sometimes they'll they'll just they'll get so nervous, they'll lunge, smack into the glass. They don't see the glass coming. I didn't see that one coming either. All right, we gotta scroll this one. Okay. Twenty-four. I'm giving them time. We used up almost an hour. Nitrogen gas reacts with hydrogen gas to form ammonia. Uh, we know that reaction. Excuse me. Might as well write it up here. Reacts with hydrogen gas to yield ammonia. Two. Okay, at 200 degrees in a closed container, 200 degrees C. Uh, one atmosphere of nitrogen gas, one atmosphere is mixed with two atmospheres of hydrogen gas. At equilibrium, the total pressure is 2.2 atmospheres. So we got, I smell ice coming. Ice. So at equilibrium, we've got 2.2 atmospheres. Oh, total. Okay, so the total is 2.2 atmospheres. All right, does everybody see that? That's the key word there is total. Calculate the partial pressure of hydrogen gas at equilibrium. 
All right. Um, does it give the constant? No, it doesn't. Okay. Well, we know we know it's going that way. Yeah, there's a change. Okay, that's all. And I can give myself a small one. Might need it. Change. Equilibrium. So in order to find the partial pressure of hydrogen, we need to know this value right here. Then we can ratio it to that one because ratios of pressure in a mixture of gases is the same as the mole fraction. All right. Well, we know it's going that direction. And if the total is 2.2, I don't know how we're going to get that without the equilibrium constant. See what my brain is going to work. I need to study for my own chance. Okay, we're going to use algebra. Um, if we want to know what this one is. then maybe we ought to use our unknown as this value, All right? So we're going to use up some of that, correct? That means we're only going to use up a third of that for this one because there's three to one, okay? If this is X, then that only takes a third of that amount, okay? How much does this, does it produce over here? Well, two thirds X, right? It's minus. Okay. All right. So now, um, what does that give us here? One minus one third X. This gives us two minus X. And this gives us two thirds X. Okay, this total is equal to that. We're told the total pressure is this. And if we add these up, it should be that, right? Dalton's law of partial pressures. The total pressure is due to the pressure of all the individual components added together. Right? So we have an equation in one unknown. Right? If we say um, this one plus this one, plus this one, that equals 2.2 atmospheres. Correct? Okay. All right, so let's get all our X's together. So we got a one plus a two, and then we got uh, a minus one third X, a minus X, and a plus two thirds x equals two thirds. Did I do that right? These are our only. Uh, digits. Minus one third minus x. OK, so this is going to be three. So what's this going to be? Uh, minus a third and minus two thirds is minus four thirds, correct? Because right, this is three thirds. So that's minus four thirds plus two thirds. And that would be equal to minus two thirds. So three minus two thirds X equals 2.2. So let's get 
Let's get this one on that side. Let's move it over there so it would be a positive number and bring this one over here. So it's three minus 2.2 .2 equals two thirds X. Okay, and this would be uh, 0 0.8. Yeah, 0.8. All right, so that's equal to two thirds X. Okay, so X is gonna be equal to three times that divided by two. So three times eight is 2.4, divided by two is 1.2, 1.2 equals X. So two minus 1.2 equals, because of this, right? Two minus 1.2 is 0 0.8 atmosphere. That's our answer. Okay. We didn't, we had to use equilibrium concepts, but we also had to use gas laws to get there. Right. That was 24. More doesn't want to race. It should be a twenty five. Yeah. Did I get that up there? Twenty five. Initially, two moles of nitrogen, four moles of hydrogen were added to one liter container in the following reaction. Okay, we're familiar with that. The equilibrium concentration of ammonia equals 0. 0.55 at 700. The value for K at uh, 700 for the formation of ammonia is. Okay. I guess we'll get right the way they did it. Put the hydrogen first and then the nitrogen. 2 in H3. So what are we starting with? 0.55 mole per liter here, right? No, we're starting with two moles in one liter. So two molar here. Two molar nitrogen. And four molar hydrogen. All right. Uh, that's it. That's a zero. So we're going to get a change, and then we should end up somewhere down here. All right. The equilibrium concentration of ammonia is 0.55 molar. Okay, that's good. Yeah, man. Starting to worry. So if this is 0.55 molar, where did it come from? It came from here. And that means it came from over here. Right? So if this is two and this is one, this has to be one half of that. Right? 275 minus uh, 277. Yeah, that's right. And if this is three, it's three times this one. So what's 275 times three? 120 minus 22, two and six is eight. So this one is minus 0 0.825 molar. Okay. That's enough of that. Doing it by hand. Point. 825 subtracted from four is 3.175 and two minus 0.275 is 1.725. So there we go. The K then is going to be this one squared. And then the reactants. 
175 to the third power, and then 1.725 to the first power. There we go. So 0.55 squared. Okay. And then 3.175, enter, cube that one, and divide it into the previous one. And then 1.725 divided into that one. So I get five point two significant figures, 5.5 times 10 to the minus three. There it is, right there. Okay. I like those, they're easy. Logical, easy. Requires some math, but not excessive amounts of math. 26. I have to scroll that one. Okay. All right. So that was going to take more than, more than I can get on this. Um, give the equilibrium constant for the following reactions. Mm -hmm. Given the equilibrium constant for the following reaction, what is K for the system? All right, so what we're going to have to do is rearrange these, do whatever we have to to these, add them together so that this right here. Okay? All right. So we've got four copper... We've got O2 and we've got two CU. I'm not leaving myself in the room. Let's try that again. Put 26 up here. Move this equation over some. O2 gas and two Cu2O solid and this has a k1 all right so now the second equation i'm going to move it down here so we have room to work two co solid and then we have cu2o plus one half o2 this one's k2 all right so what's the target reaction? Let's see, um, I'm gonna squeeze it in up here. This is our target. Two Cu solid plus O2 gas yields two Cu O. So, all right. So we need uh, two coppers on the left. We got four. We have to cut that one in half. So we've got to do one half. So what does that do to the K after we do that? If we multiply the reaction through by any number, that number becomes the power of the old equilibrium uh, constant for the new constant. So now we're at uh, K1 to the one half, right? Because that's our multiplier. So this is two Cu plus a half O2 and then Cu2O. There we go. All right, so we got, got this one, hopefully, and we need uh, two CuO on this side. Right? We got to flip this one. We need that two CuO on the right hand side. So we got this one plus half an oxygen equals two CuO solid. And this one's a solid also. Yes. Okay, so what does that do to the K on this side? When you invert an equation, you invert the K. So this one is 
uh, k to the minus one. All right. Now let's see if that gets us where we want to be. Um, two coppers. Yes. One oxygen. Half here and a half here. Yes. On this side, Cu two O. Cu two. So there's no Cu two O up here, but there is down here. So that one goes out. That one goes out. Right hand, left hand. That's going. And we keep this one here. Here. Okay. So now we're going to use that one and that one. So what do you do with the K's when you add reactions together? I don't know if we covered this one in class. You multiply them. Multiply the K's if you add equations together. So if we multiply this one to the one half of one times this one to the minus one, what does that get us? Well, let me scroll just to do a bit more in case we need all of them. Okay, k to the one half times k to the minus one is the same as k to the one half divided by k2. Right? Because that means it's inverted, it's in the denominator. That's E. Okay. I'm glad we had that one because I don't remember telling you what to do when you add them together. Just when you manipulate one equation, what do you do? Right? But when you put them together, you multiply the k's. All right. Let's see. 28, let's scroll back. No, let's see if I can get there. Let me check how many more we've got. Oh, we got till uh, 1045, right? Is it 1015? 1025. 1025. Okay, so I don't have to worry, we got time. Exactly one mole of N2O4 is placed in an empty one liter container. So it's one molar is allowed to reach equilibrium with this equation, N2O4, two NO2, I bet. Yep. Okay, so we're starting off here with one molar, correct? Yeah, one mole per liter and nothing there. If at equilibrium, N2O4 is 37% associated, change equilibrium. This looks familiar. 37% dissociated, what's the value of the equilibrium constant? Okay. If it's 37% associated, we lost. 37% of that value, didn't it? So 37% of one is 0.37. That means this side had to add twice that much. Uh, two, zero point seven four bullet. Okay, so we've got um, uh, three, Six zero point six three molar. Well, yeah, and this is zero point seven four molar. Well, okay, so the K is going to be this one squared divided by this one to the first power. That's fairly really simple. Seven four squared point six three divided. I get. Is it in scientific? No, it's in standard notation, right? Yeah, standard notation. So let's see, two significant figures, 0 0.87. 
And there it is right there. Okay. All right, so the next one is 29. Consider this reaction. H2 plus I2 yields 2HI, for which K, okay. Don't tell us. At a high temperature, okay. That's key. Because at a high temperature, all of these are gases. At room temperature, iodine is a solid. But that high temperature tells you that they're all gases. It's kind of tricky. This question must have been written by a PhD chemist. <laughs> Poor graduate student. It's okay. Equals. 40, let's see, I might need that space. Hold on a second. If an equimolar mixture of reactants gives the concentration of the product to be 0 0.5 molar, okay, so I'm, I'm going to need this initial change equilibrium. And the product is 0 0.5 molar by 0 molar. Okay, we know that. And we know that these amounts are equal to each other. What's the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen? Okay. Um, all right. We're starting off with zero there. We know that. Uh, I'm not going to put anything over here yet. We just know that they're equal in molarity. How did this one get here? It got here by adding that much, right? That's how it arrived. So how did it get there? Well, we had to lose, with two of these, we had to lose half that much for this one, 0 0.25. And this one is minus 0 0.25. All right, so whatever we have up here is equal molar. That means this one is X minus 0 0.25 and this one is X minus 0 0.25. Right? And we're given K. Right? So K equals 44.8. And that's equal to this one squared, 0 0.50 squared. And this one is to the first power, each one, x minus 0 0.25 times 0 0.25, and that's squared also. Okay. You see the problem. We're going to have to expand this binomial, and that'll give us a quadratic. And so I don't see any way around it, unless we take a quick peek. Okay. I'm making it more difficult than it needs to be. Um, if we're equimolar to start with, let me change that. We're starting off with this, then it doesn't matter what happens here. We're using up the same amount of each one. So we're going to end up with exactly the same amount of each one. Whatever happens in here, right? if these are equal to start with, we lose equal amounts as we go to make that. 
So now I think this will make it simpler. This is x squared, x times x. That does make it easier. Okay, so let's bring the x over here. And uh, 0.5 squared is 0.25, isn't it? 0 0.25. I did that right. Yeah. It's this value divided by 44.8. So 0.25 is 5.58 times 10 to the minus 3. X is the square root of that value. 7.2 significant figures. No. Yeah, two significant figures. 7.5 times 10 to the minus 2. Molar. Oh, that's our answer. Because they wanted the concentration of uh, hydrogen at equilibrium. I started to make that too complicated. <clears throat> that was 29. That was rolling. Here we go. 30. Uh, following reaction, two hydrogen fluoride gas yields hydrogen gas plus fluorine gas, and the K is one times 10 to the minus two. So it's, it favors the reactants. Given one mole of HF, 0.362 moles of H2 and 0.75 moles F2 mixed in a five liter flask, determine the reaction portion. Okay, we can do that. Two H, I don't even need to write that. What would be the Q? Q would be H2, F2. They're all gases. Yep. HF squared. Okay. We're starting with one mole of HF. One squared. And by hydrogen, 0.362. And fluorine, 0.75, correct? No, it's not correct. In a five liter flask. Seven five. Seven five zero in a five liter flask, and then one in a five liter flask. There we go. Now we got the concentrations up there. And calculate the Q. All right. So let's see. 0.362 divided by five is 0 0.0724. Yeah, and then 0.75 divided by five is 0 0.150, okay. And one divided by five is 0 0.2, isn't it? 0 0.2 squared. So let's multiply these two together and then 0.2 So I get 0 0.272. There it is. I don't think it would have worked the way I started it. 
because <laughs> my units were not in concentration. All right, 32, looks like we got everything on the board there. Here is something more we gotta do. Not many, only 38 to go with you. Okay, we're in good shape. Might even have time to talk about the lab first. Carbon disulfide and chlorine react according to the following equation. Carbon disulfide, gas, plus three chlorine gas, yields disulfur dichloride gas plus CCL4 gas, the carbon dichloride. Okay, when 2.14 moles of this one, and 5.85, okay, initial, 2.14 moles in two liters. And 5.85 moles in that same two liters. There we go. Allowed to come to equilibrium, the mixture is found to contain 0.62 moles of carbon tetrachloride. Uh, so start off with zeros. Yep. And we end up with 0 0.620 moles in that same volume per two liters. Okay. How many moles of chlorine are present at equilibrium? All right, uh, are we given the equilibrium? Let's see. No, we're not. Okay, so what's this molarity? Let's do that first. Let's get the molarity. 2.14 divided by two is 1.07. 1.07 molar. Okay. 5.85 divided by 2 is 2.93 molar. And this one is point, well, that's easy. 0 0.310 molar. Okay. So again, how did it get there? It got there by uh, adding 0 0.310 molar. Okay. So that means if you got this much, started from zero, both of them, this one also had to increase by that much. So we got 0 0.310 molar here and here. Okay. Um, that means you lost exactly that amount, minus 0 0.310 molar here, because they're, um, yeah, they're each one to one to one. But you lost three times as much chlorine. So three times 0 0.31, I should be able to do that by hand, 0 0.930, you lost that. Okay. So how much does that give us down here? Well, it's that from 2.93. Oh, that means two. Right? 0.93 from 2.93. How about this one? 1.07, we may not even need to know this one. Is 0 0.760 0 molar. 0 0.76 molar. Uh, yeah. All right, so these are the equilibrium concentrations. What's the question again? How many moles of, of uh, CL2 are present at equilibrium? 
Well, if it's two molar and you've got two liters, then it's four moles, right? Close enough. 3.99 moles. Pick the best answer. Did I lose anybody? Seems washed. Okay. If it's logical, then I know you can do it. If it's squirrely, then sometimes maybe I can't even do it. All right, that was 32, 33. At minus 80 degrees Celsius, K for the reaction N204 yields to NO2, 4.66 times 10 to the minus 8. We introduce 0.047 moles of N204 into a one liter vessel at minus 80. Okay. And let the equilibrium be established. The total pressure in the system at equilibrium is. All right. We can do that. Let's write this one again. They're both gases, so I'm going to write that up here. Okay. Uh, 0.047 of this one in a one liter. So initially, 0 0.047 molar. So it's in a one liter container. At, uh, well, we're going to need the temperature too, minus 80 degrees C. Um, and we're given the K, aren't we? Yes, we're given the K. Okay, so we're starting off with that much. Nothing over there. Change. There we go. All right, so we're going to have to add. 2x here and subtract an x here. Right, so this is going to be 0 0.047 minus x. And this is going to be 2x. And the k is equal to 4.66 times 10 to the minus 8, which should be equal to this one squared 2x squared, and this one to the first power. Okay. Now that didn't get us all the way to the answer, but we have to find out what the equilibrium concentrations are. Uh, yeah, to find, to, in order to do the, um, to work the gas equations that we need to find the, the total pressure. So actually what we need to know is what's the total number of moles of gas? If we know the total number of moles of gas in that container, then we can calculate the pressure based upon the ideal gas equation. Because all gases are alike as far as the gas equations are concerned. All right, so how do we get at X? Well, this is a very, very small number, right? which means it's not going very far that, that direction. And the x, the minus x here is going to be extremely small. So I'm going to use an approximation. So let's square this one already, 4x squared. We can't get rid of that x, otherwise we won't have anything to solve for. So 0 0.047 there. All right, now. Multiply this times that. Let's see. Um, X then is going to be the square root of 4.66 times 10 to the minus 8 times 0 0.047. Right? Because I brought this one over here as a multiplier. And then we need to bring this one over here as a divisor. And then we need to take the square root of it in order to have x. That's why I combined all those steps into one, simply because I don't have much room. 
So let's do that calculation. All right, and 0 0.047 times that, and then four divided into it, and then square root of it. All right, so I got X is 2.34 times 10 to the minus five um, molar. So two times that value equals what? Equals 4.68 times 10 to the minus five molar. And this one is, let's see. Um, 0.047. Subtract that value, it's 4.6, 1 uh, times 10 to the minus two. So the total amount of gas is this one plus this one, which is essentially this one. Because right? looks that three orders of magnitude smaller, I bet if I try to add them together, so that I'll get uh, essentially the same answer. Yeah, 4.7. So we're working with this one. This is the number, this is the molarity. So how many moles is that? What's the volume? Volume is one liter, right? So times mm -hmm. one liter equals seven. Um, four. 0 0.70 times 10 to the minus two moles of gas. Okay, I'm gonna have to erase some of this. Um, what should I erase? Should I erase this one? Let me erase this. And I can erase this one. So we need to keep that. So, um, PV equals MRT. So we're solving for pressure, correct? P equals MRT over V. And the number of moles is 4.7, 0 times 10 to the minus 2. R is 0 0.08206. And temperature is minus 80 plus 273. One ninety three, one ninety three K divided by volume, which was one liter. Okay, now we calculate the pressure. Uh, um, uh, let's see, times that one point oh eight two oh six times divided by one. So I get zero point seven. Four atmospheres right there. It's a lot of work. As long as you have a concept of where you're going, because um, it asks you for the final pressure, uh, a simple equilibrium calculation will get it. It'll get you part of the answer. It'll get you the total moles of gas. We probably could have saved ourselves a whole lot of trouble just by recognizing with such a small, um, where is it? I'll erase it. Such a small K, it's not going to produce enough of this to make a difference. So if you calculate the moles of this, then you run with it. Right? If the if the K had been like one point five, then yeah, we would have had to do all the calculations. But if it's what minus 10 to the minus eight, you can ignore the product to do this calculation. So I just wasted a bunch of time. Unless I'm sneaking, I change conditions and give you a K that's close to one. All right, 34. 
Let's scroll just a hair. A sample of solid ammonium nitrate was placed in an evacuated container and then heated so that it decomposed explosively, according to this following equation. So the container is evacuated except for the solid, and it decomposes to make N2O plus 2H2O, both of them gases, okay? Latin gas and water. At equilibrium, the total pressure in the container was found to be 2.63 at a temperature of 500 degrees, calculate Kp. All right. So the total pressure of these two guys right here is 2.63 atmospheres, right? 2.63 atmospheres. At a temperature of 500 degrees. I don't know if we're gonna need it, but that would be uh, 773K. All right, what they're saying is, if this is decomposed explosively, all of this is gone. And it's all over here. Okay. So if that's the case, then one third of it is this and two thirds of it is that. So what's one third of 2.63? Well. The, uh, the case of P would be equal to N2O and H2O squared. That's, ah, let's use the right terminology here. N2O, partial pressure of N2O um, times the partial pressure of water squared. Okay. So what's uh, one third of two point six three. That's two point six three divided by three. <laughs> and then, if we do it this way, then we can do everything in one calculation. And then uh, two thirds of that would be two times two point six three divided by three okay. squared. So if my thinking was not wonky, 2.63 divided by three is 0 0.877. And then two times 2.63 divided by three is 1.75, square it. And then multiply. So I get two point, I mean significant, uh, three. 2.70, 2.70, okay, there it is, right there, y'all follow me on that one, okay. Oh, scroll time again. Thirty six. At a certain temperature K for the reaction, uh, two NO two yields N two O four. Okay, this is going backwards from the previous ones examples we had is 7.5 liters per mole at a certain temperature k they're given the units 
but I wouldn't bother. So we've got two N O two in equilibrium with two four. And the K, let's see. We'll leave the K off for a second. Uh, initial. Initial concentration of NO2, two moles of NO2 for two liters, one molar, right? Nothing here. So the change is going to give us a plus X here. This is a minus 2X. That's where I made my mistake. I went the wrong direction. I said a minus 0.5x. No. We lost two times as much as we gained over here. So this is x. This is minus 2x. Okay. Now we can set up k equals 7.5. So we've got x divided by 1 minus 2x squared. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we got um, uh, one, and then we got four x squared, and then we've got minus two x, and the minus two x is a minus four x. Okay, so now we have, let's see, this is, that's a plus. Now we have 7.5, times one minus four x plus four x squared on this side equals x. Let's go ahead and expand this one. What's four times seven and a half? That's uh, two times seven and a half is 15. That's 30 minus 30 x plus 30 x squared equals x. So that one comes over on this side as a negative. So we have 7.5. I can do that better. 7.5 minus 31x plus 30x squared. There we go. Now let's do the quadratic. X is equal to. Minus B, minus 31, plus 31, because it's a minus 30, plus 31, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC, minus 31 squared, B squared minus 4, A, 7.5. Times C, 30, all over 2A. There we go. Now let's calculate what's underneath the, uh, what this term is. Let's take the square root of it too. So 31 squared is 961, and then Let me do that again. I already dug myself into a deep hole. Might as well go deeper. Point three eight six. Point three eight six. Okay, now we have to decide which one's which. Which one satisfies? So what was our original here? We wanted to know, calculate the N204. Well, we can't tell from that because that's equal to X. But if we say one minus two X, which was this one, then two times this one is, if X is 0.65, then that's going to be a negative number. Can't be. 
That's what it has to be this way. My goodness. Wow. Imagine what it's like doing that on a test. Right? If you come out, uh oh, can't figure out what I did wrong. That's why I give you all the time you need. Thank <laughs> you.